Capricorn. So I'm here to do your weekly reads. Um, sorry, I had to take a couple days and I'm actually not sorry, but I'm just trying to say I had to take a couple days off there and kind of recenter myself a little bit. I was going through a lot. So anyway, um, let me go ahead and grab some cards for you. You know what? I don't know if you've been watching these other reads, but these cards have been throwing themselves all over the place today, so I'm just going to use a different deck. Ah, how you like that? Um, let me just go ahead and give these unicorn cards a little shuffly shuffle, and then we'll get right into your read here. I'm also going to try to see if I can use the voodoo deck as well as maybe the angel deck or the animal deck. We'll see what happens. Okay. All right. Wisdom came out, number 32. Act with wisdom and people will respect you. So I will show this to you in just one second. Okay. There we go. So um, the queen, okay. Wisdom came out first. And it has a Native American feel to it. This is a Native American chieftain right there in the middle. And a man with his hands to the heavens there. There's actually two men on either side of the chieftain. I don't know if you can see this one's seated and this one's got his hands to the heavens. So um, you might need to be uh, refer to the, the kind of more spiritual aspect of things for a little while here. Um, sometimes wisdom does not come from a person, a place, or a thing. It just comes from the ethers. And it's kind of like a download of celest excuse me, celestial information that is, it pertains directly to you. So whether you share it with other people or not, um, you just need to keep your, your eyes to the skies a little bit and figure out how that's going to go down. The Queen of the Unicorns came out next. Um, it's number 43 and says, you are blessed with love, compassion, and wisdom. And there's a little, little person. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether it's a girl or a boy. Uh, and this, it's pictured as a girl, but ooh, it could be also a little boy. And basically this is just saying that, um, you know, the queen of hearts or the queen of, uh, unicorns or the queen, the queen in most of the decks is a more compassionate, loving aspect of ourselves. So even though, uh, you know, you can draw a queen card and it can still represent a male energy, um, it does kind of intuit that there is a reproductive, creative, um, softer and more compassionate side to things here. So um, because this wisdom card came out with the man and the chieftain praying, and then the, oops, the queen of unicorns is actually pointing the other way. Seems like a, a section of information is coming your way. 18 is the last card that you got, which is magic. There's magic around you, so expect excitement and joy. There is a little house or a little box of treasures here. Um, the moon, three shooting stars, and a unicorn in this card here. So what I'm getting from all of this is that there needs to be a turn towards something more subliminally magical. And I know, I know that sounds kind of strange, but bear with me here. So this man is praying. He's praying. He's meditating. And then the other man here is just sitting quietly with himself, trying to you know, receive whatever downloads, whatever information he might be uh, able to ascertain from his surroundings. Here is a unicorn protecting a child, um, or at least sitting with a child, uh, enjoying what whatever she's talking about and paying close attention to it. He's got his head down, um, really pointing as well with his un unicorn horn to this last magical card here. And because, you know, children are oftentimes more susceptible to magic or more susceptible to uh, the unseen intuitive messages, this to me is the unicorn letting the child know that there's a treasure treasure trove full of, uh, you know, shooting stars of um, shining a light on the way towards that magic with his own path. 
and being able to secretly denote that information to the child and um, just just by its presence or just by its actual uh, ability to be present or available to the kid in its life. So um, one thing that there is one thing that is notable here, wisdom is number 32. So three plus two is five. And then queen of unicorns is 43. So four plus three is seven. And then magic is 18. So one plus eight is nine. So I definitely think, you know, when looking at five, seven, and nine, um, those are all odd numbers. And they're, it's kind of like two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? So, you know, five, seven, nine, 11. I don't know uh, if you guys have watched the, uh, I think it was a Virgo or the Taurus read that I just uploaded. You can look at those too. But um, I think it was actually Taurus that had 11 as the future card. So um, this kind of seems like a prerequisite or a, a prequel, I guess, to um, a future outcome that may be taking place here. Um, when you're talking about act with wisdom and people will respect you. I'm going to go ahead and get a, some cards for that. I'm going to use the voodoo cards for it, actually. But while I'm shuffling here, I do want to talk about that. When you act with wisdom, acting with wisdom doesn't only have to do with being wise. It has to do with being reasonable. Okay? So, although people say, oh, if you're, if you're kind to everybody, things work out, that's just true to some degree. Okay? But also, I think if you want people to respect you, sometimes you've got to be able to make difficult decisions. And you've got to be able to make decisions that are not always popular with other people. Um, when you act with wisdom, I just looked at acts there. I like that, um, you know, acting as in um, displaying wisdom. Okay, so if you know that you're, what makes you personally happy, um, to be connected to your personal family or to be connected to um, certain tidbits of information or certain um, people, places, or things, then oftentimes that's action. So just knowing just knowing what you're about and what you're not about is action. So um, when you act with wisdom, then it just means that you've got a history of knowing how and what makes you happy of how to make yourself happy and being able to offer that to other people at the same time. So um, I just, I thought that was interesting just given the things that are happening in the world today. Uh, Gouda Lefnambo, which is number three, came out in the reverse with wisdom in the upright. So sometimes interacting with certain places or, or things do not make you happy. And if you're clear about that, even if it's not something that might be a popular opinion, it is a piece of wisdom that you can offer to somebody else. So I just think it's interesting that there are no unicorns in this picture. There are no, um, I mean, there's literally three people and the rest of them are horses. These are horses. These are not unicorns here. I don't know if you can see that. Those right there. Um, and I just, I think, you know, when you're, when you're dancing with fire, when you're playing with fire, or when you're deciding for other people things that are going to hurt them, or when you're deciding for other people to do things or force the, your presence on, or, um, you know, in any way, shape, or form, take a, a wisdom that comes from above and enforce it upon somebody else without their permission, without their knowledge, without their... Um, input, I don't think that that's wisdom, to be honest with you. I think that that's more so trying to uh, control. And there's a big difference between wisdom and control. I just wanted to point that out. The Queen of Swords comes next, or the Queen of Unicorns, excuse me, Queen of Unicorns comes next. It says you are blessed with love, compassion, and wisdom. So compassion is a much better word to use than um, act, an act. Because you can, I mean, people can say, oh, I'm acting in the best interest of, or I'm acting this way because that and the other. Um, well, as long as you're doing it with blessings and compassion, then typically you can't go way too wrong. 
Um, however, people do just choose to do whatever they want to do. This is why the unicorn looking over the, the little girl and, and teaching her the ways in which she is supposed to move is such an incredible, um, it's like a queen-like action from a unicorn. That is very royal, regal, um, important, and, you know, a poignant thing. If you can trust a, a unicorn with a child by itself, then you can also trust, you know, the unicorn to have some pretty valiant actions, some pretty significant, yeah. It's like a defense. This is uh, Pietro Ogun La Flambeau. And that came out with the Queen of Unicorns. Sometimes we disconnect from our own psyche or disconnect from worldly wisdom and actions and words, etc., etc., in order to, to defend ourselves. In order for that defense to happen, there has to be a almost a magical quality or a, um, a quality of relief. I, you know, some, somebody adding relief to your life or giving you space to breathe, to think, to absorb, to experience life in a safe manner um, that doesn't feel like you're going to be taken from, uh, you know, that you're not going to be stolen from, that you're not going to be beaten down, that you're not going to be abused in any way, shape, or form. Um, part of that valiance that I was talking about, the unicorn of the queen of unicorns having, is a, prote a protection mechanism. And that is kind of what I meant by, you know, although males can have a very compassionate and creative and um, softer side to them, the main difference between a mother bear and a father bear is that the mother bear will kill you over her child over her child. And not to say that the father bear won't want to, but there's just innately something ingrained in, um, you know, a mother of any kind uh, on this earth that will definitely stand up for their child a lot more than you might assume. You know, you need to be far more scared of a mother bear defending her cubs in the wild than you would have to be from a father bear who just got pissed off because he took his honey, you know? Um, there's, there's just a, there's a, a song and dance that goes along with being a mother, with, with having this magical air to yourself that has a lot to do with defense. And rather than being on the offense all the time, like, you know, I think men are more, able or apt to be on the offense at all times, uh, alert at all times for threats and not to say that they won't fight for them, but I, the defense has a lot to do with the reproductive jewels, that light that gets shown onto a mother's character when her own children are being uh, harmed or are in harm's way or whatever the case may be, it's a secret. I mean, look at Look at the moon, and then there's three shooting stars coming out of the moon. You know, um, there's a almost a supernatural, paranormal, knee-jerk reaction that is going to take place when somebody feels their children have been put in a disrespectful, non-wisdom having, you know, position of potential harm. And I don't think that it's even normal for, uh, I think if you don't have that reaction as a mother, then you may not be, yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, you may not have as much of a impetus towards the value of life. I mean, this is the loca card. It's IV and it's a uh, even poison ivy as a, a plant, you know, has the impetus of being able to sting those that are stepping on top of its, its offspring. 
I mean, they, like, when you think about every single facet of life, you know, you've got hurricanes from the, the ethers. You've got, um, you can have lightning storms and rainstorms, etc. On this earth, obviously, you've got uh, lions and tigers and bears, oh my, and all of those things will attack you if you try to take their children from them or separate them or injure them in any way, shape, or form. Then but beneath the sea, um, obviously, any kind of uh, large whale, uh, fishes, and just about every single life form that there is, they've got a defense mechanism to help with survival, and I think that this has got a lot to do with it. Once you've got the wisdom that you need to have the correct form of, of uh, advice and perception and interaction, you no longer need somebody around to be your queen or to, um, I mean, even on the chessboard, the queen is the most coveted player on the entire board. That's your defense. You defend her up until there's nobody else left on the board. That's your defense because she's fierce, because she's able to sit here and say, hey, I will create magic or manifest whatever it is that I've got to manifest, uh, whether it be, you know, ink sprays from squids or from octopuses or uh, whether it be, uh, you know, huge, huge, inc incredibly large uh, lion, tigers, and bear claws to slap humans with if they try to come hunt their children, or whether it be, um, you know, the, the talons of a, a, a raven. If you sit there and mess with a raven's nest, you will unleash a barrage of feathers like you will not even believe. They will be dive bombing your head, um, doing whatever it is that, that it takes. And although that can look like magic to some, our responsibility is to educate our children the difference between compassionate and um, loving and blessing and all of these different respect mechanisms. That's our job here on earth. So in order to do that, it's imperative that we respect each other first and foremost. And if that respect isn't given, then people shouldn't expect for it to be taken either. Uh, or if it isn't taken, it should not be given, excuse me. Um, so yeah, I don't know really how else to explain that to you, Capricorn. I think you guys get where I'm coming from with this. I think you, you know, it would be unreasonable for us to attack hornet's nest and then expect for the hornets to just sit there and go, oh yes, go ahead and kill all of us and take all of our honey and that's fine. You know, that's not even uh, a regular, that's not even regular response. So let's go ahead and get some animal cards to go ahead and clear up for us what to do in the future or some advice and then we'll be good to go. Okay, yep, the lion came out first with wisdom. So there's a lot to be said for the wisdom of a lion. We just talked about it. And I think that's, I mean, no, no discussion necessary for that. Queen of Unicorns came out with the insect, the moth. I think it looks like a moth or a butterfly, to be honest. Okay, and the last one was the parrot. Wow, okay. So basically, what I'm seeing here is that a an animal such as a lion, just keep in mind that they will take off on you. They will try to destroy your entire life. If you, if you mimic them, if you parrot back what they are trying to achieve as, as uh, parents uh, as a pride altogether, or if you're bold enough to believe that your magic can outdo theirs. Although a hunter can kill um, a, a lion if they're a really good hunter, the hunter will also, or you know, the mama lion will also stalk you. 
and I know that they have really long memories. There are videos of mama lions coming back years later uh, and knowing exactly who, which zookeeper it was that raised them, either in a positive way or a negative way. And uh, just remember that it's a circle of life, that these things come full circle. So you cannot accept, you cannot not accept one person, expect one person to do something for you that you've already ruined for them or vice versa. So the respect is necessary and um, whether we like it or not, it's something that we'll all answer to uh, either now or after we're gone, after we die. So anyway, uh, you guys have a good one, Capricorn. I'll talk to you later. Bye.